In this video, I'm going to give you my top five Power BI features that was released in the year of 2023. We're going to go through each one, what they do, and how they've improved my development process. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. As we've rolled into the new year I thought I'd recap some of the features that were released in 2023 because there were lots of features that were released that had a significant impact in how I work with Power BI. And hopefully by the end of this video if you didn't know these features yet you know that they exist now and you can start using them as well so just a note before i start is that this list is completely subjective there are lots of features that came out so it's pretty much just cherry picking the features that have significantly impacted my work so you might have your own top five so if you do uh, just leave it in the comment section box below for other people to see right so the first feature that i want to talk about is the subtitles feature which is a feature that came out back in march so basically this feature was super simple when it first came out it's essentially something that allows you to add a second level of detail just below the titles of your visuals so with this extra level of detail apart from the title it it lets you add some more details or storytelling elements to your visuals in your report. So it could be maybe just some quick rag just to show if your values are good or bad, or maybe you want to just give some storytelling elements just to explain what those uh, metrics are. And the coolest thing about this feature is that because it's applied on the frame of the visuals and not on the visuals itself, it means that pretty much the majority of the visuals that you can put in Power BI, you can add a title and a subtitle to, which is great if you want to add more context to them. Another thing that is uh, really cool about this subtitle feature is that you can conditionally format what the text or values are being shown on the subtitles, so which means that either um, you can create your own storytelling, like what we have here, for example, or you might want to use some calculations or base it on the DAX measure, which means this is completely customizable and flexible to whatever you need. So the next one that I wanted to cover is this feature, editing your model in the Power BI service, which came out as a feature last May. And it essentially gives you, the developers, the ability to edit your models directly in the Power BI service, where you publish your reports from Power BI desktop. Now, in the past, you were able to kind of edit your reports that you published in the service, but that's only surface le level. So that means that you might be able to change your charts, change your colors, or, you know, create more pages, but it didn't give you the ability to edit the models themselves. So maybe you want to quickly edit your DAX measures, or maybe just manage the relationships underneath. Now with this feature, it lets you edit your semantic models and gets under the hood. So being able to modify your models, manage your relationships, you know, apply and create calculation groups, manage your measures. So you'll be able to kind of see what measures are being driven underneath those reports, you know, see the syntax and even edit them yourself. And that will be applied automatically on the report that is published in the Power BI service. So when it came out, it didn't really have a lot of features going for it. And in fact, even now it doesn't really compare to the customizability that you have in Power BI desktop. But what's exciting about this this feature is that it, in the future when those kind of customization options do catch up, it removes the need for you to even create and download it basically deprecates the need for you to download and install Power BI Desktop because the majority of your developments can happen from the Power BI service, which is a really cool prospect to have. The next feature that I use quite often in a lot of my reports now is the new card visual, which is a feature that came out back in June. And it just gave us a lot of different ways of using and customizing how we use cards today. First of all, it gives you a bunch of customization options. Maybe you want to add an icon on your cards, or maybe you want to add a background image to them. You can easily do this with the new card visual. And I remember when it came out, it had so many ways that you can customize your cards that, you know, you can create cards that, you know, look totally different than what you would normally expect from a KPI card. So you had things like, as I mentioned, uh, background images, icons, but they also had, you know, different shapes, you know, adding snips, 
or rounding. You had accent bars and a bunch of its different formatting settings had the conditional formatting option, which means that you can change their behavior based on DAX measures that you have defined, making them completely customizable. And furthermore, the main difference between the new card visual and the original kind of card visual is the fact that you can have multiple cards in the same visual. So that means that, for example, instead of creating three different cards visual in a report, you can simply add all the different measures in the same visual and the new card visual will automatically create those groupings for you. And that simple ability, you know, provides a lot of benefits. First is in performance, because all of the cards are grouped into one visual. When your reports are loaded for the first time, it means that Power BI only needs to load one visual instead of three separate ones, which is affecting your kind of report performance when it's being loaded. The second thing is that you can manage all of these cards individually, like you normally do before, but you can also manage them as a group. So if you want to change the background image across all the three cards, you only need to do it in the same visual and it will get applied across all of the cards that you have put in the data field, which saves you a lot of time, especially if, you know, like me, for example, I would typically have my KPI cards at the very top of my reports and I might get some requests from my clients. So for example, can you add a different color or maybe can you add a different icon? For example, it still gives you the ability to individually manage these cards, but in cases where you want to apply it across all of the cards, the new card visual, make sure that they are able to do so in the right spacing that you might want. The next one that I wanted to cover is the new button slicer that came out as part of the November 2023 update. So again, like the new card visual, it's basically a new supercharged way that uh, you can use the slicers. So now this is a kind of a more sophisticated version of this default slicer. So the original slicer didn't allow you to customize a bunch of things like it will just give you a list if you want to show it on a tile. You can't even change the colors of the slicers is highlighted or selected, which is very limiting, especially if you're creating customized uh, reports that follow certain color schemes. You want it to kind of match with whatever you have set up. Now with this uh, new slicer, it gives you all of that ability and more. So for example, here, as you can see, this is uh, using the new kind of button slicer slicer and you know you can customize things like how it's colored when it's selected what is the title and subtitles of them what how they're colored you can add icons and you can even customize things like saturation or blur uh, depending on if they are hovered if they're selected which is really handy and it gives this sort of more professional feel to your slicers so the last one that i wanted to cover is the reference labels which is another feature that came out from the november update and what it does is essentially allows users to add some more details and insights with their new card visuals. So for example, here you can see that the KPI here is using the new card visual and we are able to add some more reference labels at the bottom, which gives some further insights on what we are showing in this main card. So as you can see, we've added two different layers of sort of reference labels here. So one compares against the previous month with some colors, again, fully customizable and we also have another one that shows us if it's below or above target. But the interesting thing about the reference labels is that you can add as many combos as you want here if you want to add some more insights to your cards. And when it came out, I found this super interesting to use because with the new card visual, you can only add a subtitle on the kind of a frame level of your visual. So if you had, let's say, three cards in the same new card visual, you can only add one title and subtitle across all of those three. And this new reference labels allowed me to add some more context and insights to the individual cards themselves. So and that's how I sort of found it really useful, especially because I really like the new card. Uh, visual feature. And that's really it for my list of features that I thought were the best features that came out as part of sort of Power BI's release in 2023. Do you have any features that you thought deserves a spot here? Let me know in the comment section box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel 
channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.